What if the software you want in Ubuntu isn't in the Software Center repository? Let's figure it out. This segment is brought to you by Full Sail University. We all already know how to download stuff out through the Ubuntu Software Center. You just click on the thing, and then you wait for it to load, and then you choose whatever you wanted to search for, and then you just click the little install button. But what if what you want isn't found in the software repositories? It's either not there, or you want to, you know, maybe save a little bit of time waiting for the stupid GUI to show up, and you want to do it in your command line. Bam! See that? Command line, wherever it went. See, my computer's too slow for it because I opened up the dang software center. Well, I have an answer to this. You may have to compile code. You may have to install some kind of crazy binary package. Or you may want to just create your own software package for Ubuntu or any other Linux distro. In this case, there are five, six, I don't know, something like that, different ways that you can install packages if they aren't in the Ubuntu Software Center, and I'm going to show you how right now. So first off, I wanted to download the Nexus 7 Ubuntu Touch repository, which obviously isn't found in the Software Center, and it looks like this. Now you may be thinking, yeah, you already did this on the show, but I'm going to show you anyway. So for this case, I would just copy this over, and I'm going to use this command called apt-get. And let's paste it in here. Pseudo apt get repository PPA Fablet Team Tools. Now PPA Fablet Team Tools, that is the name of the package that I'm trying to download. Apt get is what I use to actually install the package. Add apt repository is adding that repository to the apt get uh, repositories. So I click enter. Of course, put in my password because it is a pseudo command. And it adds the package to my system. It may tell me that it's already there because I've done this before, but if it doesn't, it'll go ahead and install it for you. Now you can also install packages like Skype and Google Chrome, all sorts of stuff like this. And if you can't find them in the software repository, you could always find them, find the .deb file on their own third-party website, whatever that might be. And in this case, you would just download the deb, double click on it, and click install once it shows up in the repositories. Now let's get a little bit into apt-get because we all like to use the command line, don't we? So first off, of course, we want to search for whatever thing that we're going to try to download. So I'm going to type in apt cache search, and I'm going to see if Python is part of the list. Maybe. There it goes. Okay, so I see there's a whole bunch of different kinds of files involving Python in here that I could download. So I could look through here and find whatever I wanted and download that said package. Let's go ahead and clear that out because that's a lot of information. You can also do such things as adding your apt repository. And for this example, that would be the Nexus 7 Ubuntu Touch uh, PPA. Now, anytime you want to add any kind of new repository, you want to make sure after you do that, you update. To do that, you just type in sudo apt get update. It's so easy. And it'll update all the different repositories that you have installed. And of course, to install, you just type in sudo apt get install and whatever the package name is. To remove this, it's pretty much exactly the same. You just type in sudo apt get remove in the package name. They make it very simple to do this through the command line, and pretty much anybody can do it. You can also upgrade with sudo apt get upgrade and sudo apt get remove if you wanted to and clean up. You can clean up any kind of caches that are extra from downloads that you want to get deleted from here. And last off, we also have an Easter egg because of course it's not Linux without an Easter egg, right? So this one is sudo apt get moo. That's right, it's a cow. Because why would you not have a cow, right? <laughs> It's fun. Now, if you do have some kind of DEB file, it's super easy, but what if you do have these PPAs? What does that mean? What is it? So, anyone can really create a PPA through Canonical's Launchpad system. For my example, I use the Nexus 7 Ubuntu Touch software package. Of course, remember, use these at your own risk, because once you add it, it's there, and it could be made by anybody. You, you don't really know who it was made by, so 
use at your own risk. Once added, you can just install it with AppGet or the Software Center, and then you can also compile packages from source code. Now this is where it gets really fun. Packages can be compiled from source. Generally, you won't really need to do this because most packages that you really want to download on your machine are probably already done for you, but in case you're making your own packages, it's very simple. You just download the tar.gz or whatever kind of um, zipped file it might be, and you need to install this thing called Build Essential. So this is a package that looks like this, sudo apt get. I use sudo apt-get install again, haha, <laughs> build essential. And this is going to install it, Y for yes, of course, and we'll just wait for that to install. Now once you have build essential installed, you're going to want to find whatever the uh, zipped file is, the tar.gz file. You may find it from GitHub or wherever. You want to extract this and then change your directory to the new directory created for that said code. You run a, want to run a file called configure.slash configure or check the readme or install file that's inside that new directory if configure doesn't work. If you get any kind of errors while you're installing this new repository, run apt-get install for any of the packages that are needed, and keep on running configure until you're completely done with all the installated, installed packages that you needed. Now, once you have all of this stuff ready to go, you want to compile your program. You run the make command for this, then sudo make install to install your program, and sudo make uninstall to uninstall it if it didn't actually work or if you broke something. If you've ever run into binary programs, these are a little bit different. They're closed source software, well they might be closed source software, and it may be in binary form, in which case you would want to download the tar.bz2 or the tar.gz and run the .sh script. Now, you know every single way that you might need to download some kind of package or some kind of repository, and hopefully you don't have to run into the ones where you have to compile it that much, but if you do, you now know how to do it. I want to have your feedback. I want to know if you've created scripts, if you've done this several times before, or maybe you have easier ways to do this outside the command line that I don't really know about. Let me know in the comments below, or you can email me feedback at hack5. And coming up, we have trivia and technolast. But first, let's take a quick break and check out our sponsor. You guys know that the mobile app industry is on fire right now. Well, Full Sail University's online mobile development bachelor's degree program can teach you the skills you need to take advantage of these emerging opportunities. And in this degree, you're going to learn both the programming and business sides of mobile development so that you can go from concept, development, deployment, to market and application from start to finish. And you'll explore advanced programming languages, visual frameworks, usability principles, and app development on both iOS and Android operating systems. And through Full Sail's Project Launchbox program, students receive a MacBook Pro preloaded with industry software plus iOS and Android devices. Courses are delivered through Full Sail's immersive online education platform, which maximizes the capabilities of the Mac, giving you the learning experience unlike any other. Between the App Store and Google Play Store, over 50 billion apps have been downloaded with no signs of slowing down. So if you're ready to master the technology and software to compete in this rapidly growing industry, visit fullsale.edu hack5 to get more information on this online degree program.